thing about science is that you often come across words that you've never met before and you're thinking to yourself, wow, what the heck is that? I have no idea what it is I'm reading. Well, the good news is that a lot of science words you come across, you can actually break apart into a prefix and a suffix and you can use those to work out what the word means. This will give you some context to the sentence and maybe even the entire paragraph. Let's take a look at a few examples. All right, first word up, isothermal. Iso is the prefix. The prefix is at the start and the suffix is at the end, right? So iso tends to mean same. Something is staying the same, right? Let's make that an E, there we go. Uh, thermal tends to mean about heat or temperature, right? So thermal, thermo, thermic, they're all to do with heat, temperature. So what is this isothermal business? Well, maybe your chemistry teacher told you, hey, make sure those three experiments you're doing, they need to be run under isothermal conditions. That's just a fancy way to say, make sure they had a constant temperature, right? They had the same temperature. Isothermal, same temperature. See what we did there? Maybe you've never come across that word before, but we can break it down and work out what it means. Let's look at some other words, some of which uh, you probably have come across already. Like maybe this one, microscope. Now, you probably know what a microscope is, right? It's, um, you know, something you'd use to look at really little things like cells, right? Well, let's break it down and see what it actually is. Micro tends to mean teeny, 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 tiny, right? Really, really small, right? So tiny, um, it actually means a millionth. So a millionth is really, really small, isn't it, right? So micro, teeny, tiny. A scope just means to look or it's a device for seeing something, for looking at something. So scope means something that you'd use for seeing something. So a microscope is something that we're going to use to see little tiny things. Okay, that makes sense, doesn't it? Here's another word that you've probably come across, telescope, and you probably know what it's for. What do we use a telescope for? For looking at the planets or the galaxies, things like that, right? Well, scope, a device used for seeing things. Tele means far or distant. So a telescope is a device that we use to look at distant objects like the planets or the galaxies, okay? Telescope, makes sense. Here's another word that I'm sure you've come across, thermometer. Now, the first word we looked at was isothermal, and we said that's to do with heat or temperature. Now, thermal, thermo, therm, thermic, all same, same. They're all to do with heat or temperature. They can change slightly, right? So like before we had M-A-L for isothermal, and now we have M-O for thermo, right? But it's still the same concept. It's to do with heat or temp. So there's our thermo, heat or temp. Now we say thermometer, but when we're breaking it down, we have thermo and meter, right? So a meter means you're going to use something to measure. So a meter is all about measuring. You're going to use something to measure. Wow, that's some serious scribbling going on. Let's maybe see if I can make the letters look a bit more like letters. Yeah, didn't really make much difference. Oh well, uh, meters you know, used to measure. So a thermometer uh, is used to measure temperature. Cool, we already knew that, but see, by breaking the word down, uh, firstly, we're checking that that's what it actually is, and yes, it is used for measuring temperature, so we're right on that one. Uh, and hopefully, secondly, we're just seeing how we can break these words apart and make some sense out of them. Let's move on. Next word on the list, barometer. You wouldn't say that, like you wouldn't say thermometer, you say thermometer, and here you would say barometer. Well, we know the meter part, that's going to be used to measure something, isn't it? Barro, barrack, this sort of prefix is to do with pressure. So a barometer, a barometer, is something that you're going to use to measure the pressure. We use a barometer to measure air pressure. So there we go. Next one, isobaric. Now I've actually met both parts of this already because we know baric means to do with pressure and right at the start we learned that iso meant same. Isobaric conditions just means the pressure isn't changing. It's a constant pressure, the pressure stays the same. 
isobaric. Here we have photosynthesis, yet another word that I'm sure you've heard of, that you've come across somewhere in your travels. Well, let's break it down. Photo, photic, fote, that is to do with light. And synthesis means to make. Right, synthesis and genesis, they both mean to make. So we have photosynthesis, using light to make something. Yeah, that's what plants do. They use sunlight energy to make their own food. Okay, so they're making something using light. Now, actually, speaking of photosynthesis, we used to think that all life on the planet depended ultimately on the sun for the source of energy. Right? We used to think that um, because of photosynthesis, right? You start with a plant and plants do photosynthesis. They need sunlight energy and then the animal eats the plant and your food chain goes on. Uh, but then in 1977, um, we found a whole lot of life living at the bottom of the ocean. Now we're talking 4,000 meters down. There is absolutely no light. Um, the zone is described as being aphotic, right? Photic to do with light. And when you put the letter A in something that negates it. So the aphotic zone, there is no light. Um, but then we found a whole lot of life down there. Well, you know, to have these food chains, you have to start with a producer making their own food, but they couldn't do photosynthesis because it's pitch black. There is no light. Well, what was going on is this other process, chemosynthesis. We know synthesis is to make. Well, chemo means to do with chemicals. That makes sense, doesn't it? So the organisms at the start of the food chain at the bottom of the ocean weren't using sunlight energy. They were actually using chemicals. They were using chemicals to make their own food. Right, as the producer. So instead of doing photosynthesis, they were doing chemosynthesis. And then of course, all the biology textbooks had to be rewritten because not all life depends on the sun as a source of energy. All right, let's move on. Bathypelagic. All right, bathy means deep. All right, so it's a deep something or other. Pelagic means to do with the ocean. So what are we talking about? Absolutely, we're talking about the deep ocean. In terms of uh, the ocean, you can split it according to depth into five different layers. We have epipelagic zone, that's uh, the top 200 meters, epi meaning upon, and then we have the mesopelagic zone, so meso meaning middle, and then we have the deep ocean, the bathypelagic zone, but then what's deeper than deep? Well, the bottomless, right? So that would be the abyssopelagic. But then what's even deeper than the bottomless? Well, now you're going all the way down into hell, aren't you? Yeah, the hadopelagic zone. Um, hado meaning hell, the hellish ocean. Uh, so there we go. Bathypelagic zone is the deep ocean. It's one of the five ways to split up the ocean according to depth. Let's move on. Thermogenesis. Well, we know this one. This was to do with heat and temperature. And genesis just means to make. So thermogenesis is what you might usually call shivering. Your body's way to make more heat, to warm up, right? So you tend to shiver when you're cold, don't you? And in shivering, your muscles are moving just a little bit again, 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 right? That's shivering. Well, the thing is, about 80% of your body heat actually comes from your muscles moving. That generates heat. So when you need to generate heat because you're really cold, you move your muscles over and over and over and over and over again, and that's generating heat. That's thermogenesis, right? Usually we just say shivering thermogenesis is a funkier way to talk about it. Now, this is the last word we'll look at, and what do we notice? A little bit more tricky because we don't just have a prefix and a suffix, we actually have three parts to this word. Bathy, we know, means deep. Thermo, we know, means to do with heat or temp, temperature. So what does graph mean? Well, you've probably drawn a graph at some stage. Uh, graph actually means to write or to, what the? <laughs> okay, technical issues, but we're back. So graph actually means to write or record. Right, that's what a graph is. 
some sort of recording. You know, think of photograph, right? You take a photograph, that's a recording of what you see using light, right? You have to have light to make your photograph. If there's not enough light, you need to turn the flash on to give enough light, yeah? So graph is to make a recording or to write. So a bathy thermograph, a little bit trickier because like I said, this word is in three parts, but essentially, what are you actually doing? You are recording the deep ocean temperature. So there you go. You want to know the temperature way down deep in the ocean? You would use a bathythermograph, okay, to make a recording of the deep ocean temperature. So there are just some words. There are so many science words um, that you know that could have been put in this list, but there are just a few, just to give you an idea that you can actually often, not always, but you can often break apart the words to work out the meaning, to work out what they're actually talking about, give you some context to what you're reading. So there you go. Good luck and have fun. Hey you, hit the like button. Yeah, and the subscribe one too. Yay! Yay!